it was a fast, it was a fast pivot. So fast we'll talk about that in our mindset for highly successful people. Mindset for highly successful people. And it's, this is the change maker challenge with Grace Edison and Kate Stillman. And I'm Kate's happy dance because we haven't done this in a while. We haven't. I, I miss it. It's like, you know, at oh. first it caused me nervousness. Um, but it was actually excitement that w I was misinterpreting. And now I just like, when I, we don't do it, it like fucks with my week. I'm like, we didn't do our <laughs> thing that we do. It grounds, it grounds me in uh, the conversations I'm having with people in what is going on. Because if you don't know, now, you know, things are moving fast. Yeah. Things well, are this moving goes fast. To a, I mean, this goes right into a, a number one mindset of highly successful people, which is your net worth is your network. Your network is your net worth. Right. And so when we start to get that, it's like, oh, the, and, it, and what is a network? It's conversations. All relationships are as conversations. All a network is is conversations. And when you start to realize like what conversations get you more to where you want to go or who you want to be next, where mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that's why it's so worth it to have very intentional networking, very intentional relationships. And so this is what I'm going to really dry down, drill, um, drill down into. So what brought up this topic for you mindset of highly successful people? Well, I often, when I, I, I mean, I'm in, I'm in constant uh, communication, right? Like I talk to people all day, every day. I tried to do up the math a little while ago. I've talked to thousands of wellness professionals around the world. I, I want to know the actual number, but I got to go back and look at my tracking and, and math and do math. Um, but it, it, I look at common threads and themes and often looking at what am I hearing and it, cha it does change over time because the thing is, is like if one person over here in this corner of the world is experiencing something, the person over here in the other corner is also experiencing it. it and what are the common themes and sort of the patterns and things that are coming up? So I have noticed sort of recently how we as wellness professionals can get in our own way with a, an old mindset or like a, a, a stuckness. And so you and I had started talking about this earlier in the week. And then I kind of set out to do a bunch of research and I actually love research. I'm a nerd. <laughs> I set out and did a bunch of research on like, what are the, what's the mindset? And it's like, what are the actions more or less? What are the highly successful people thinking and doing? And what are the common threads there too? Yeah. You and I have talked about this a lot and I think it's, really looking at sometimes well anyway you you have a I have a few things that I would also like to bring up that I see but you you mentioned yeah. the net piece, so let's well, talk I'm just saying that. is that I yeah and I just added into our questions here and I want everyone listening to ask yourself this because by asking yourself better questions and this is a this is a mindset slash mental habit uh, what are mindsets in many ways they are mental habits um, of highly successful people is they ask themselves really good questions they're not just looking to like take in data they're asking a better question so that they can sift data. So my question for everyone to ask themselves is what mindsets do you notice of highly successful people? And now, and what we're saying actually too is, is what habits or what mental habits, what mindsets do you notice of highly successful wellness pros? Yeah. And so by asking the question, notice how your mind does something different. Then when I say, Chris, it's going to give you the top five mindsets of highly successful wellness pros. Yeah. <laughs> it's my like 1980s DJ voice. What do you think? I love it. It's really bang on. <laughs> I ever, if we ever go back to the 1980s, I have a second career. Totally. Well, and then this is, I mean, it's a big shift. And I think one of the other parts of this, something that you've really helped me embody is instead of just looking at like what the problems are is coming to the question of like, what's the opportunity here? And even beyond that of like, how do I see the solution? Right. How do I start to see the solution? And usually I have to look outward at like, where do I see the solution already happening in, and that goes back to the network piece. It's all interconnected by the way. Yeah, It's all interconnected. Yeah. Of, it's a different plane. Right and this question? is the thing. I just want to explain why it's all interconnected. Yeah. Because you're at one plane and you're looking at the plane above and you all should be doing this because you're asking of people who are more successful than me, how are they thinking different? They're in a different plane. 
So everything's different and you'll just see these little pieces of it. And when you get in the plane, it's all, of course it's all interconnected. It's a whole, it's a whole perspective. It's a whole different experience, but we're going to isolate a few of these things that we see. Yeah. Well, and when you do that, you know, as Kate's waving her arms in the air, when she's going a whole different plane, it's up, it's up here. So I had, I taught yoga the other day and I looked out at everyone and their eyes were down on the floor and I was like, Whoa, stop. You can't see the horizon you can't see, you can't take in what's going on around you. Like if everyone right now looks at the floor, how much of what's around you, you cut off your periphery and you cut off like a future thinking of like, whoa, right? And you always talk about the 50, what is it? The, what is the perspective? The, the uh, like 50,000 foot view or 30,000 foot view. Yeah. Just to step back and like take in what's, what's, what's going on, like seeing like the, whatever the mountains, et cetera, you're taking in so much more when you lift your gaze looking and then asking the questions of like, well, what's, yeah, what's there, what's going on around me, what's already really actually accessible to me, but I'm looking down here. So yeah, network is so I, important with that. Well, no, but what you just said is having a bigger perspective, right? Just keeping orienting to a higher level perspective and then down to the day to day. Where am I trying, where am I trying to go? Big level, one year, two year, three year out. Like, where am I really trying to go? What's trying to happen here? Bigger level of you as wellness pro, bigger level of you as a change maker. Where are you trying to go? Having that higher level perspective and then from there coming back into the day to day. So say you're in tree pose and you're looking down because you're like, okay, I'm not going to fall, right? You know, and, but then you, you kind of get like, okay, I can, I can be here and I can see, I can see, <laughs> oh, I can see because I'm not just like, mm -hmm. you know, but with beginners in tree pose, we start with like, one point on the wall or one point on the floor. Often it's one point on the floor. Like, let's just find down. And then where do you want to go next? In advanced people, right? They're going to take that into a back bend or yeah, something or crazy. Yeah, close their eyes. But, and the thing close is, is like feeling they have a bigger view. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling into like, there's a bigger, there's actually that bigger space and like a, um, an, an inner, well, yeah, finding, anyway, I digress about, <laughs> Well, let, let me just come back to the reason we have a deep time, deep space perspective, the reason we have bigger goals, right? And we know exactly what they are, what we're trying to manifest that's much bigger than we can do on a day-to-day -day level, right? Mm -hmm. Is that so that then we can engineer, so we can engineer backward. Mm -hmm. And this is what people at a next level success always have in common is they know, they know where they're trying to go and they're constantly reverse engineering that back into the day-to-day. So yeah. their day-to-day -day looks really different than last week. It looks really different than a month ago. It looks really different than six months ago. Totally a different human being than a year ago. Because potentiality in the future and bigger goals, the unmanifest, requires you to change and evolve. That's going to happen on the day-to-day. -day. But you'll see it. Other people will see it in you. You'll see it in yourself more at the three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, two years, three, you'll see it more in these chunks, but there's a shift happening in the day to day. Successful people know how to see, like I need to get there and I'm not the person who's there. Right. So how can I build that back and change how I show up today so I can get there? Well, and there's a sense of urgency there in how am I going to get there with the, the, with the least amount of energy, the most efficiency. And what I always say is without breaking your heart, because we try to go it alone, our gaze down, and we can't see the blind spots. We can't necessarily say, like, survey it with those peers and say, okay, what do you see that I don't see? What's the question I didn't ask? Right? It, it's who so, can help me? who can help, help me? Who's trying to help me that I'm not even letting help me? Right. So if the, I think that sometimes um, it, it's a healthy sense of urgency. It's like, I really got to get there. I really want to experience that. And I know that I, it's not just about me. It's about the people that I was put here to serve and to help. And the urgency for me is, is like, a, it's a key, right? Like I have urgency when you and I talk about something that we're going to do, or we have a plan, I feel urgent about it, that it already, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost yeah. like, shit. Okay. How do I do it? Like yesterday, right? I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. We're, How's this not already done? Yeah. We talked about it. How is it not? Well, so let's talk about this. There's. If we look at evolutionary enlightenment theory, which is a, a thing, it's a thing, Grace. We know how you evolutionary, like yeah. I, right. So we have the ground of being, and the ground of being, like it's all good. You know those t-shirts, like life is good. Yes. Winston wears this t-shirt, life is good, and we're always like, dude, 
Life's good. Yeah, chill. Life's good. <laughs> We're chill, right? That's the ground of being. Mm -hmm. It's all already arising in pure perfection right now, right? That's the ground of being. When we meditate, we drop in and we heal in the mm -hmm. ground of being. Like mm -hmm. we heal all the little shit that happens throughout the day, all the hard stuff that comes up against you as you're not the person who can handle it in the moment. Because if we're growing, we're going to hit that a lot, a lot infrequently as the world's trying to help you evolve to become a more effective human being, right? So we're going to come up against all of our shortcomings. But wow, we get to get on the mat and on the cushion and be in the great perfection. And we can see this in any mystical tradition. It doesn't matter if it's coming from the Catholics or the Zen or anywhere, right? You can see like there's this sense and it's in the texts. It's in the ancient text. Like it's all good is in the ancient text. And that's what they're describing. And there is no urgency because there's no time. Mm. It's mm -hmm. beyond time. It's beyond space. This is where you have, uh, you have the Kanchikas in Tantric philosophy, the five Kanchikas, contraction of time, contraction of space, contraction of power, contraction of knowledge, right? You have all these contractions that make you limited. There's five of them that goes with each element, right? But in the ground of being, there's none of those contractions. Like you are, you're in deep time, you're in deep space. And that's why it's so healing. That's why it's so important as change makers to be in a rhythm where you're connecting with that energy every day because it takes that. It takes that to live from that. Okay, don't say anything yet. The other part is the evolutionary impulse. And the evolutionary yeah. impulse is like, let's get this done yesterday. It's got a direction. It's got a purpose. It's where your great ideas come from. Those all have to do with manifestation. And one of its qualities is urgency. Mm -hmm. So if we don't feel the call to the urgent, it might mean that we're just preferencing in our life. It's all good at the expense of actually becoming something, of actually becoming a change agent. And that great podcast uh, with Dharma Mitra, where he was just going off on this stuff. And at the end, he was like, you need to act. You need to do something with your wisdom in this lifetime. Mm. And he was emphatic. That was great. Because he's like this really sweet older man. And he was like, Durr! you know, and it, Who yeah, Gail and like, Luis are going to do yoga with today. Today. It's so exciting. <laughs> Thanks for them. Well, so, yeah, right. Because that's that's the command of yoga. So it's like you're so like you get the juice, you get the bliss, you get the ananda, so that you can do something. Well, I was gonna say before you before you highlighted the other side, it was I was sensing this pulsation of grounded in what like what is, and then pulled and called towards what we're becoming, and that they're both it's simultaneous. You know, it's like they're both they're both there. Um, so. But I'm wondering about like when I hear and I hear it, I hear something being like something squashing the urgency, not necessarily that people are preferencing it, but that there there's a block or there's a weighty, there's like a dead weight, like a paperweight sitting on top of the urgency, which is doubt, fear, lack of knowledge, lack of network, um, the mind, like potentially the mindset stuff, old wounds, right? Like past experiences, memory of it didn't right. work out don't want to, you know? Well, I just want to say it's like, because you don't, you don't actually have the skills to meet the challenge right now. Like, cause that's mm -hmm. why all that stuff often comes up is because you don't have, you don't have the skills, which is why I always like to say like, who do you need to become to do that? Yeah. Who do you need to become to double your income? If it's an income thing, who do you need to become to double your impact? If it's an impact thing, mm -hmm. right? If wherever the urgency is more, and if it's an income thing, have no shame in that. It'll get you, it is impact. It's just coming through a stronger economical financial part of your Democrat, you know, like your, your makeup, mm -hmm. your demographic makeup. And that's not, don't judge that. It'll, it'll, <laughs> income is always tied to impact. So yeah. don't judge it if it's income and don't push it away, right? right? Honor it Yeah. and say, well, okay, if I take that seriously, if I take that seriously, that desire, like who do I need to become? And if it's impact, it's the same deal. Like to have a, to have a real meaningful impact to actually, you know, say like we just did this autoimmune Ayurveda uh, free webinar and it was really powerful. And the people in there were like having some very direct perception transformations from understanding an Ayurvedic perspective and an immune and autoimmune. And I, and I was saying to you right before we started recording, I'm like, 
we need to fill like we need to fill the seats with people who really need help with understanding their immune system and understanding uh, how to become a self healer because it's so important that impact to me is so important that I mean, we can only help basically like another I don't know 40 people into that class that have an, that want to understand how to be a self healer with an autoimmune condition that's impact. Mm -hmm. Like I have an obligation from the desire to have that impact. Is there a revenue tied to it? Yeah. Is it more important or less important to me? It's less important to me, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because in order for that person to get to where they need to go, they have to invest. They have to put money in. And this is another key mindset of successful people and successful wellness pros is they, they invest in where they're going all the time. And they don't invest according to who they've been or how they've invested in the past. So they're continually up leveling how they invest because they get that, whether it's their money, whether it's their time, their attention, who are they attending to? Who are they not attending to? Which is just as important. What are they no longer investing in? What are they investing in? This is big stuff. Winston and I have very, like, sometimes like super intense conversations around like what we're, what we're investing time and money in and what we're not according to our family's goals, as opposed to like our more extended family's goals. And those are intense conversations because our extended families have this plan mm -hmm. <laughs> for us. And it doesn't mm -hmm. sometimes resonate with how, what we want to do. So we reconcile that. So we change how, and what happens is actually Often by setting a precedent, then it frees up other people in the extended family to shift gears and align with something that might not have been possible, but because we were brave enough. And that's what it feels like with investment. It feels like you need to be brave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I have to go pick up my children. Okay. <laughs> but I... I really, I just think the, the conversation is so, it's so important. I'm going to keep it going. I started it this morning on the forum. I really want to hear from people in terms of what do they see? Yeah. What are the questions that they're starting to ask themselves? What are they seeing here? What, what would they, what else would they like to hear from this conversation? This, I would like for this to be really interactive. Yeah. I'm, gonna, um, I'm just going to throw two in there. Like, like one is on compromising self-care. Yeah. So when I'm talking about investing, it's like you, you start to invest a lot in yourself. You invest a lot in your body and it doesn't necessarily mean money at all. Like you can do this on a shoestring mm -hmm. really, but you're investing in your wisdom and you're investing in your inputs and you're investing in your habits and, and those things become uncompromising. So yeah. I just want to throw that one in. And then Heather on CMC um, and she's a yoga health coach. She said a strong belief in what they're doing. Like, yeah. And we can talk a lot about how, the one key mindset is a very, very strong connection to intuition. So I'd love to have a separate conversation on that one. And mm -hmm. then also she says, willingness to do the hard stuff that others might back down from to get to their goals. And I can't tell you how much this is a market differentiator. In fact, when Gwise and I were meeting on our Q4 goals the other day um, and our 2019 planning, I was like, do you know how many people will not do this stuff? Like just by being willing to do this, we differentiate ourselves in the marketplace. And this is huge. You know, the more successful people are, the hard stuff, they're just looking at skill and challenge. Challenge is high. They know they don't have the skills to get there. So what do they do? They get the skills. <laughs> they get all the things, Grace. They, they get, get all the things. things. They get all, all the things, things, things that are available to you. They're all here. The they're already here. They're already they're here. Right. Lift the gaze. And then they look for efficiencies. Like what's the fastest way to gain the skills? Maybe I don't need the skills. Maybe I hire someone with that skill. Maybe I make a friend with that skill. Maybe I call up so-and-so. Now I'm in network, right? Because they have the skill. So yeah. they could do that part. And, I, and then they get into reciprocity and all that's, these things. And that's, that's not, that's not going at, that's not a, it's not a rush. When we say urgency, we're not talking rush. We're talking leveraging. We're talking leveraging something that other people are figuring out, have figured out, are doing, can be like, oh, hey, figured that out already. You know, yeah. two heads better than one, try a hundred, try a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are things sometimes, like I spoke to someone today that it's been a few months since I've spoken with her and she was like, wow, I can't believe the stuff that you are saying to me right now. I can feel the growth that's happened in you in the last few months. And I'm like, right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Right. <laughs> okay. We're going to, we're going to keep on this topic of conversation. I am looking forward to speaking with more people about this and we have the change maker conversation to have a career conversation and calendar is open right now, filling up for August. Uh, get in while the getting's good. <laughs> Where do they go? Um, 
yogahealer.com slash have dash a dat dash conversation. Um, and also message me here, private message me on Facebook and grace G at yogahealer.com. I'll send you the form if you, if you need a quick access. Bye. Bye.